I worked in a prison, in a remote area, in southern Iraq miles from Umkaser. At the time, I was there it detained 30k prisoners and an additional 3k that no one except people working there knew about. They'd put us in blacked out window commercial buses and drive us an hour away for days at a time to guard the facilities. We were never allowed to speak with anyone on the main prison, FOBN forbidden to tell anyone about it. We referred to it only as Jurassic Park. One of the black prisons run by contractor medical personnel. The facility itself was a facade of mud. Brick buildings resembling a small village. The place was complete with villagers, us. Dressed up in men dresses and a small area for goats on the outskirts. From a distance it looked legit, but up close you could see the bulges from our combat gear. Underneath the clothing, all of us there were pecked for our darker complexion and allowed to grow facial hair. You also had to be military police with TS and PRP or Yankee white clearance. I couldn't see Um Kaiser from the facility so I have no idea where we were, just that we were in the middle of nowhere. We had to park the gun trucks and buses away from the area and use netting to cover them. The trucks were manned by APMC, so they looked like civilian vehicles, besides being armored variations of normal vehicles. Usually a small fire team would be tasked with security and a turb. The rest of us had to put the clothing on and start a small patrol to relieve the other guards. In late 2007 we were woken up early and recalled to go to the facility three days earlier than our normal rotation, we bitch got ready and headed out to get in the buses. This time around we arrived at a lot full of newer up armored Humvees pulled to Stfu and get in. There were already drivers in each truck and off we went. The drivers drove in a tight group which is unusual for convo ops. They also didn't talk to us the entire ride. It's pitch black out and all you can see is blackness. But this is the first time we were allowed to see where we were going because the Humvee windows weren't blacked out like the buses. I'm trying to orient myself, but can't see much beside the little red lights of the vehicle in front of mine. The windows are thick armored glass, so it's impossible to see anything in the nighttime desert with no illumination beside the convoys. We drive for little over an hour and you can see a faint glow in the distance. We start to get closer and it's the facility that's on fire. DLT comes over our comms and relays that anyone not wearing American DCU pattern not for it is to be eliminated via deadly force. None of us are wearing mop gear. The drivers stopped the vehicles and were told to dismount and rally around a group of LMTVs that were waiting for us. They start calling out SS numbers and handing out mopping gear that is already our size. My WTF is going off hard. NCOs come around and tell us to gear up. We start putting on our mop gear and are abruptly told to stop and strip back down to our regular uniforms and take out our military ID cards, driver license, and any other form of photo identification on our person or gear. Little teams of PMC private military contractory Blackwater etc. start collecting and searching. US. One guy would cut away our name tape, military branch tape and unit patches. Once they finished another team of them would come by and try to find anything the first one missed. Lastly our NCOs did the same thing to see if the first to miss anything. Officers start rallying up our NCOs for the op order operations order. Tells them what the plan is. And the rest of us are told to rally back up around another set of LMTVs. Armored supply trucks like a newer deuce and a half and start unloading boxes filled with ammo, magazines, and newer NVGs than the ones we already had in our gear. These ones had a rail system that was attached behind our optic, so we could wear a gas mask and still shoot and see in the dark. We we're told to load as many magazines as possible and put the spares in our three-day assault packs. Fancy military for backpack. We already carried a basic load of 210 rounds and M9 pistols with 45 rounds in our ammo pouches on. Our IBAS individual body armor. We're taking over to another area to zero our weapons at a makeshift little range made of HESCO. Blast barriers. With my NBGs I can see that there is a security perimeter around us made up of PMCs. We shoot, zero, then rally back up to hear what the plan is. We are to provide personal security for a team of contractors and are to follow any and all direction from contractors, unless it's basic combat tactical decisions. We start forming up into squads 12 people then break down into fire teams about 4 people and designate who will stay with the contractor, who will provide external security, and who will be clearing rooms. We then are briefed via rock drills literally a fucking map made up of rocks and lines and dirt, for which squads will assault at what entry points or defend entry points. 
We're leaving in platoon size of about five squads, and the rest of our normal security detail will provide an overwatch with heavy weapons, marksmen, on the external perimeter. Once we start to systematically clear the village, underlying prison facility, after all that a team of three contractors, wearing those pressurized suits that push air outward when it rips join my fire team. I want to say they had DuPont logos on the suit itself but it We start to move toward our objective. The patrol there goes smoothly and we set up a perimeter and recon the area. Only a few buildings are still smoldering. The fire itself had gone out during all the BS of just gearing up. A majority of the village is intact. There are also bodies strewn about but with the gas masks and only night vision, it's hard to make out if they are insurgents or the guys we normally relieve wearing local clothing. There is a small eye or beacon infrared flashing at the base of one of the larger buildings and wants our team to shift to cover, clear that building. Plans are adjusted and the assault begins. It is damn near impossible to move with all mop suit on. That combined with sweat pooling in my mask and low visibility is making something relatively complicated in itself even more difficult. Fire teams make progress to their respective areas. Our building is on the opposite side of the town so it takes us a minute to get there. We bound and take positions making it even more tedious as we move. I'm running to take up the next position and eat shit into the ground landing on top of a body. The face is caved in and the gore gets all over my mask and suit. I notice he is armed with an M4, meaning he is American military and there are shell casings and magazines strewn about his body. My guess is it lost footing when my foot hit the shell casings and like marbles they made me slide and lose balance. The guy behind me bounds up and drags me up by my assault pack back up to my feet, and we continue. Small arms fire is going off sporadically, but in controlled bursts meaning that other teams are running into opposition, but handling the situation. We arrive and stack up on our building and wait for the last team to get in place and set off to flashbangs to signal for all the building clearing teams to start. In covering my area of responsibility, I can barely see shit with the sweat stinging my eyes and my inability to wipe it away because of the gas mask. The gunfire has quelled and the flashbangs echo throughout the village to signal the rest of us. I'm first in as leadman in my fire team. I'm having trouble seeing in the darkness and the fucking mask is making it worse. I swing my weapon up and clear my area of responsibility. The rest of the fire team follows. First room clear so I stack back up on the next door and wait to feel the pat on my back to assault. The next room, my eyes are stinging at this point, and I really can't see shit. All I'm hoping is some prick doesn't get the drop on me and I get lit up. Feel the slap on my gear, shove open the door. I swing right and see a silhouette in the corner. He first cowers away from the light coming from my surefire flashlight then rebounds. I can't see if he has a weapon or not but he starts to run toward me. Reach to squeeze the trigger, but the rubber from my mop gloves is caught on the trigger guard. Something so simple and quickly taken care of becomes an action long enough to get me killed. Two shots go off and my ears are ringing. The third man saw the threat and neutralized it. We start to stack on the next door after securing the assailant with flexi cuffs. The contractor comes in and tells us to stand by. Walks over and starts fucking with the dead body. WTF is this HIGGA doing dot JPG? Starts swabbing the mouth with tips and prodding the body with other instruments. I can't really focus on what he is doing as I'm responsible not to get us killed if someone comes. Through the next door, the other two technicians come in and start consorting with the contractor. The head guy walks over to the fire team leader and tells us to stop clearing immediately and stand by. The contractor gets on his radio and starts relaying a message to his people, sitting there waiting. Letting whomever is waiting for us to get into position cause they know we're there now. And every minute wasted is a minute for them to prepare for our entry. I'm getting antsy thinking about it and want to keep moving but can't until I'm told. The contractor's radio goes back off and he mumbles something into it then addresses, I fire team. Leader, we are told that anyone inside the facility is to be considered hostile and don't try to identify. Weapons just shoot. You mock here come more crimes tribunal.mp for contractor tells us to continue. Get to the door. Feel slap. Rush in. Room clear. This is the deepest tint to the building any of has ever been. There is one last door with a keypad and badge reader. There is a dead guard in the corner with bowls on his exposed skin. Black blood pooled around him and his clothing soaked through his clothes. The contractor follows us when we secure the body. He repeats the process again but doesn't call it in again. 
We wait in the room for a minute and wait for other fire teams to finish their way up to their respective entrances, waiting, waiting. Then one of our guys asks the contractor if we're supposed to shoot other American personnel, HMMM. What a dumb question, I think. But then this prick looks at us and says, yes, anyone in this facility regardless of affiliation. What the fuck, I can't even believe him hearing this shit. Had it been our rotation instead of those guards then the higher ops would have just had us off. Two, with the downtime I'm starting to connect the dots. Something biological was in this place and now they are worried it will get out. My heart starts to race, I have blood on me. I'm wearing a shitty mop ensemble from some lowest bidder government contractor probably had made in fucking Puerto Rico. I'm starting to shake a little bit. My gas mask is starting to pulse on my face from the deep breaths I'm taking. I'm starting to freak out. How well did my buddy checks really check this fucking thing to make sure I'm sealed up right? I ask the contractor if I'm safe inside my mop gear. He responds nonchalantly. I yell at him that he has a fucking suit that looks out of the movie outbreak and that's easy for him to say. My leader tells me to chill the fuck out. I proceed to chill the fuck out. Sort of. The radio goes back off. Other teams are ready. The contractor walks up to the door and takes out the restricted area badge. Swipes it. Then enters his pin. Door hisses loudly and retracts backwards with a hydraulic whir. Enter the next room. Sterile. One-way glass to my right. Little corridor not really a room. Shove the muzzle into one-way glass to break it, in case someone is going to light me up from the other side. The muzzle makes contact and the solid glass doesn't even wobble. The shock hurts my wrist, continuing toward the end of the corridor. Another keypad. The contractor does his thing. We assault into a long hallway with rooms on either side. Fucking room clearing nightmare. The contractor assures us all these doors are secure and walks ahead of us to a specific door. I can hear movement and voices inside the rooms and realize they are where the detainees are kept in cells. Contractor talks to leader. Contractor wants us to force L to extract the prisoner. We don't have any riot gear to do this. Have to do it anyway. Stack up on the door and he inputs a code to open it. Door unlocks, Russian. My first step and I slip, Pan AM shoved forward by my teammates for the extraction. In knocked out briefly, wake up back outside cell. I'm covered in blood and my teammate is wiping blood off my face shield. A contractor is hovering over me and asks me to check the seal on my mask to make sure it doesn't tear. Seal is fine. Doesn't even ask if I'm alright. Walks away talks to SKT. Look inside the cell. Covered in blood and vomit. The detainee dead in the corner. Over here contractor address one of the techs. Tells them to stay out of the cell and that he was hoping we'd find him here and wouldn't have to. Go another block of the facility. Restart assault. And get to the end of the cell block. Another keypad, input co, and we go in. The room is round with a guard shack in the center of the circle room. Cells align the entire room with another keypad door at the end. Some of the cells are insecure with doors open. Vomit, blood, shit line the walls and floor. The gate shack is one-way glass. And can't be seen inside. Hear beeping from inside. American steps out. None of us have the balls to kill him. I recognize him. One of the guys I normally relieve, but he is down here. He starts to babble. He doesn't recognize we are behind the protective suits. Sees contractor shuts up immediately. Contractor is waiting for us to react. I'm waiting for us to react. No one reacts. I lower my muzzle and look to SGT for guidance. He just nods his head no. Contractor asks to speak with SGD and to other techs. Take opportunity to ask guard what happened. Tell him my name. He remembers me from doing changeover. Relays that for days ago five of those fuckers came up and told us there was a riot going on. That the guards inside were being overwhelmed by. Said that we didn't need suits like them that it was a precaution. They lie. We need to get out of here man. Looking into his eyes notice they are bloodshot. His skin is yellow. Gums pale. And he keeps rubbing his stomach. One of my guys starts talking to him. He turns around to face him. The back of his pants are covered in black shit. As in fecal matter matting and hardening. He pauses a long winded gas but doesn't even break stride talking to the other guy, pauses looks at the ceiling abruptly, snaps his head back forward and vomits all over the guy he was speaking with. He starts to talk again like nothing happened. Arguing starts to get louder behind me between contractor and SKD. Start to step back a little, dit. 
Shit pass, guard starts telling vomit guard to take off his mask so he can see his face. Vomit guard is freaking out trying to clean his face shield while crouched on one knee. Shit pants starts stepping closer to his crouched body and reaching for his mask. What the fuck is he doing? Start yelling at him to back up and leave the other guard alone. Ignores me. Throws up on guard again. Still reaching for his mask and they start to scuffle. Shit pants are screaming for him to take off his mask so he can see his face. I run up and hit shit pants with the butt of my weapon. He rolls off gets to his knees and continues to shit and vomit himself screaming at vomit guard to take off his mask I start wrestling with shit pants and screaming for SKT to grab flexi cuffs. Screams are muffled because of the mask. I'm on top of his chest but he is still grabbing at my mask trying to rip it off. He is biting the rubber face shield and screaming at me in between. Start freaking out. Rubber o over boot kicks him in the temple. Black blood starts coming from his ears. He starts struggling more but SKD saw us fighting and ran over. Now he is flipping him over and gets the cuffs on him. He keeps worming around. Seeing the cuffs digging into his skin. A vomit guard runs up and we drag shit pass into an open cell and slide him in and shut the door. We and our gear are all covered in vomit, shit, and blood. The contractor says nothing to us but stares. We all nod in acknowledgement. Shit pants are still screaming tumbling around in the cell. The contractor has all of us come to him. And the tex says bluntly, if you want to get out of here you need to listen to us. We have a ways to go and I want to stay alive. Then walk off to the next keypad door. SKD yells for us to stack up. Stack up. Feel slap. Assault room. Five people mulling around in the center and looking surprised when we enter. I fire and so does everyone else. It's a security station. Monitors intercom system etc. Secure bodies with flexi din cuffs. Eskidi walks to the camera monitor and consults me. Says we can bypass a lot of shit if the contractor tells us where we are going. Agree. Call over the contractor. He agrees and looks over the monitors. Points to the facility clinic and says we need to go there so they can do their job. And we can all leave. BRB gotta grab something. The facility is much bigger than expected. The contractor tells us the first rooms we passed are just holding areas for new prisoners to be sorted. Emergency exit map in security room. Start to plan assault. Place is built like a giant square with several hallways connecting rooms all the way to the center. That makes up the largest cell block and aid station. Run rock drills using miscellaneous office supplies. Get confident we know somewhat where we are. Go in. Start to assault the facility again. Get lucky through most of it. But traces of running gunfights are evident throughout. Bloated corpses are in some of the security substations. And we are out of flexi cuffs. Begin using sidearms to ensure they will not pose a threat. Get to a three-tier block. Decide that we will just assault through as quickly as possible to the other side. And try not to. Avoid getting bogged down. Open door and start beeline. There is a security station in the center. Running toward it to get past Tanjeet Fo out of that place. Door swings open and prisoner with M4 steps at and starts firing at us. America steps out next and takes up a position of cover and starts firing. Hit prisoner standing out in open. Keep up suppressing fire on guard. While my teammate runs down the opposite side to flank him. Tags guard we all rush up to clear the security room. It's empty. Guard is still alive. Tells us they saw what we did to the other guard station and the prisoners and guards that are still alive are armed and waiting for us. Eskidi shoots him. There are only four of us that have a shaky understanding of the facility's layout, which makes me nervous. No time to talk. Run across the cell block to the other door to the next room. Continue through several more rooms, careful at each substation, but haven't run into anyone else. Make it to the clinic. Secure it then set up a defensive position near the entrance to protect contractors. While they did whatever they were doing, they finish up and come out with a flexi cuff prisoner. I'm getting more anxious over this situation. Now we have to tote around for people while fighting a force that knows the layout of the structure. The prisoner is not wearing protective clothing but he doesn't look sick either. Start to understand why they need him. Begin assault through building. Have to cover new territory, sit the shortest point to one of the exits that is an entrance that leads to another facility, where we can link up with a fire team from our original assault force on the surface. Start running through rooms trying to be cautious, but trying to GFO as quickly as possible. Run into what looks like an ambush. The three who set it up are barricaded behind random furniture and bodies that are the kill zone. Start running through the bodies trying to keep weapon level with barricades. Gets to the point where running on top of bodies. 
reach the barricade, all dead. Still have weapons, looks like they succumbed to whatever everyone is sick with. Vomit, shit, black blood. Something new with these guys, they look like their abdomens tore open from the pressure of the fluids inside of them. The organs are black, some of the fluid is a deep yellow. Keep running, getting tired, getting complacent, overheating, dehydrating. Nothing we can do but keep running, SKD, slagging behind us. We cover more ground, and he stops and takes off his mask and throws up. I look at the contractor and he just nods his head. His skin is yellowing. Aggressive looking bulls on his cheeks have that same deep red tint to his eyes. Pulls a nine. Kills himself before we can even say anything. No time. Start running forward again hoping to make it to that door. We have three more rooms to cover. The contractor calls me back and tells me to stop. I know where this is going so I put the M4 on him and tell him I kill both of us before I let him. Waltz out without me and my guys. Tells me not to worry and says we need to deviate slightly to decontamination rooms. Too tired to care and he leads the way. Get to rooms and they spray the gore off the suits. Sitting, waiting for remnants of the original prisoners and guard force to kill me. Will I just stand there like an asshole while this thing sprays a bunch of shit on me? Nothing happens and we all rendezvous in what he called a clean room to wait on my other three guys. To get done with their decking process, start to put gear back on and not pay attention. Gunshots ring out in rapid succession. The contractor has killed the other to Tex and has a gun on me. Tells me he can get me out of there, but I need to protect him when we get to the surface. Agree to it. He shuts off the Deccan and locks my guys inside to die. Has me put on one of the tech suits instead of my original gear. Takes me not to the door we fought to get to but to an elevator. Nothing seems real. Go on autopilot. And follow him he knows the layout more than he let on in the beginning. I get to the elevator and he takes us back to the original mock-up village that hit all this shit. Rendezvous with my original security element hoping they don't recognize me through the face mask. Hello lands and takes us across the border to Ali al-Salem where base in Kuwait. I'm smuggled out of the country and back into the United States. The contractor kept his word and I kept mine. If I gave you my real name it would say I died in a mortar attack in late 2007 in southern Iraq, outside of Umkazer. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.